Hello again and thanks for taking the time out to join us. This is another in our series of webinars that looks at, at electrical system design in the aerospace industry. What we thought we'd do is uh, create a task and then show you how we go about uh, designing that task and, and testing it. So the task is to design and build a harness. Well, we as engineers are all familiar with the design and manufacture processes, but we normally receive a specification for a project, and as design engineers, we begin to plan how we are to design that product. We have to consider various aspects for the product, uh, such as quality, manufacturability, and meeting the specifications. <clears throat> but one thing that is sometimes gets overlooked is test. We may design and build a fantastic product, well, if we can't test it, or it's difficult to test, then we will have problems. So, what do we consider? Do we test it at all? Do we manually test, or do we use an automated system? So, um, if we were testing um, by hand, or even testing at all, what should we test for? Well, at the very least, we should measure continuity resistance, short circuit measurements and insulation resistance measurements. Uh, we could of course measure capacitance and impedance, um, but by manually testing we probably leave capacitance and impedance out. Um, in my own experience, taking this simple harness in front, well, even, even one with say 12 pin connectors at each end, would take uh, 144 isolation tests, 12 continuity tests and 12 volt drop tests, uh, for fully populated connectors and if we allow maybe one maybe two minutes uh, for each test uh, without losing your pace on the page without writing the result down incorrectly um, this could be four or five hours to do that test so almost a full day just to test a simple harness and the simple harness example we have on the screen um, we're going to take you through this example and I'll hand you back to Jason now who will take you through the next stage of the process Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, so yes, as, as Jeff has mentioned, um, you're, you, we've got a harness here, a very simple one, but the same, um, what we're saying would be true for any size of harness, uh, no matter how large or complex, but the very least that we're going to want to do to test this harness is uh, continuity, resistance measurement, short circuit test, and high voltage test. Um, if we're looking at the continuity resistance measurement, uh, in this simple harness, we've got five measurements to make. Um, if we allow a bare minimum of, say, five seconds to make that measurement and 10 seconds to log the results, write down those res uh, results, um, that's 75 seconds worth of manual testing. Um, you'll note that we've stressed measurement, and we'll carry on doing that all the way through, um, as it's, me is it's measurement that will highlight the nature of any failure, such as wrong wire gauge, uh, bad crimps or solders or, or damaged wires. Moving on from continuity test, uh, we'll get to the short circuit testing. Um, and the short circuit test is often left out completely when manually testing uh, due simply to the time involved. Um, in short circuit testing, you need to introduce current on each contact and measure for that current appearing at any other point on the harness. Again, emphasizing measurement because it's only the measurement that will show the nature of any failure, such as stray strands of wire, uh, miswires, uh, solder spikes, and so forth. Uh, allowing just a couple of seconds per measurement um, and 30 seconds or so to log the results in this case. That's, again, 86 seconds of manual testing. And this assumes, again, that equipment is readily available, um, no failures are found, and there's no retests required. Moving on from short circuit tests, uh, the test that is uh, very rarely have ever um, done with manually testing, um, high voltage insulation measurements. Uh, these are performed to check the health and the state of the insulation of each core. Automatic testing would involve charging each core in turn and measuring the current leakage into all other cores shorted together. Uh, this is known as the one against all test. By hand though, the, the only feasible way of performing this te test uh, would be to use the old mega type uh, test where each core is charged in turn and we measure for current leakage into the other cores one at a time. Uh, this test process is slow and prone to error. Uh, the high voltage test in this, uh, in this instance, manually testing, um, you can see the breakdown in front of you, a minimum of 160 seconds for the high voltage check. So 
in summary, looking at the manual testing of this harness, um, we've taken approximately six minutes, and that's uh, not taking into account any failures, um, any breaks in the, in the testing process, um, availability of uh, test equipment, and so forth. And again, I'll stress it's a very simple harness, but the same um, would be true of, of any, uh, any size of harness that we're looking to test. Um, by stating that we've got to test this harness, we are acknowledging that people can make mistakes in building the harness, and uh, these mistakes are just as likely in manual testing. Um, where human error and transcribing results could lead to an incorrect pass or fail situation. Um, there are technical issues too. Uh, true high voltage testing uh, requires each charge net to be tested against all others shorter together. Manual testing only realistically lends itself to testing each charge net to each other net in turn, as we've mentioned. Now, this has been proven time and time again to be inherently flawed and has been shown to allow faulty cables to pass. Now, if we consider the same harness tested automatically. We're looking at a fraction of the time, very obviously, um, in this case, you know, less than half a second. And importantly, all test results are created, reported, and logged automatically. So there's no case of manual uh, error, inbuilt manual error. Um, importantly, automatic testing performs the same test the same way every time. It's computer controlled. Um, so we've given a consistent test process, guaranteeing consistent product quality. So I think we, we, we're pretty much convinced, and it's pretty obvious, we want to uh, be running automatic testing. Um, we are still faced, however, with the perceived issue of the complexity of creating test programs. And this is exacerbated, especially in our industry, um, by the changes that are a feature of the development projects that we're working on and the consequent rewriting of test programs. Uh, we're going to show you uh, now through the next process how we've eliminated this problem or consideration and used modern software tools and techniques to make the testing proposition simple.